So Labor Day weekend kicks off tomorrow and in years past that typically means more traveling as you're wrapping up your summer fun. But with the virus still looming in places, some people have been pretty hesitant to fly. That's why this morning we're asking you, when will you feel comfortable to fly? Now, we've asked you this before, but it was some months ago, so we're checking in now and it looks like more people are saying they would consider flying now with well over a quarter percent of folks who have voted this morning. So keep weighing in. You can go on to our app and click on the vote now tile or to go WFA.com slash vote now. And also for those of you who are ready to fly and you're getting out of town this weekend, Chris Sadegi joins us from DFW Airport. And Chris, health experts say people do need to be cautious still this holiday weekend. Yes, especially, Kara, because it's the holidays that have seem to give public health officials the most concern. They worry that people will go out, that they'll relax a little, get comfortable, stop social distancing. However, here in Dallas County, the COVID-19 risk level has been dropped. They dropped it from red to orange. That means going from extreme risk to moderate risk. That opens up guidelines for things like healthy people eating in restaurants and small gatherings under 10, so long as they are still using masks and leaving enough space between people. This drop in the level is because hospitalizations and new cases are down. Still, officials warn the Labor Day weekend is no time to relax. It is the last big holiday travel weekend of the summer. And we have seen spikes before with these holidays. Flights on airlines are slowly starting to fill back up as flyers get their confidence back. But Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson warned against thinking the drop in the risk level means it's OK to start thinking that things are back to normal again. And for some, the temptation will be to engage in behaviors we know to be risky simply because we're all exhausted of our reality. Because kids are back in school, AAA has expected more people to take family road trips on the ground rather than in the air. For those people, they recommend planning a lot of stops and also taking with you plenty of cleaning and sanitary supplies wherever you go. Kara, back to you. All right, thank you, Chris. So when will you be comfortable to fly again? So far, the majority of people have said in 2021 with about 69 percent and around 31 30 it's been changing every few seconds percent of people say you know what i'm ready to fly now so thanks for weighing in our poll we appreciate it you can always continue the conversation on twitter use the hashtag i am up mark back to you all right thanks Kara. i know the airlines wish it was 100 percent saying now uh, all right here are some of the top stories uh, in the fight against covid 19 a vaccine available as soon as november 1st well the cdc has uh, said states should be ready to distribute a vaccine by that date. They say they have partnered with Irving based McKesson on distributing a vaccine to the public. Most public health experts, though, say a vaccine will not likely be available until the first of two, uh, 2021. Pardon me. Uh, some new studies confirm that steroids reduce the risk of death in severely ill COVID patients by about a third. That news has prompted the World Health Organization to advise that steroids should be first line treatment for those patients. And today, both Frisco and McKinney ISDs are starting in-person learning and similar to Allen ISD, Frisco and McKinney have launched a COVID-19 dashboard to help parents keep track of the positive cases in the district. Both started virtual learning on August 13th. And we have just learned that Facebook will block new political ads the week before Election Day. The Washington Post has reported that the social media platform is making this move to battle the spread of misinformation. Facebook also also plans to label posts by candidates or campaigns that try to declare a win before the final results are in. Kara? So whether we like it or not, our phones have become a part of our everyday lives, even more so now to stay connected during the pandemic. So have you been afraid to go without it? And how long could you really go without it? Well, you might have nomophobia. Hannah Davis live this morning with a new study showing that it's actually a lot more common than you think, so you're not alone. Yeah, good morning, Kara. I actually went a week without my phone. This is a vacation. I would, well, I actually checked it in the morning, but then I'd go away from it. So it was really nice. But this new study is saying that more and more people are addicted to their phones, especially younger people and especially in college. Let's take a look at the study and some of the impacts that nomophobia is having on people. So this came from the American Academy of Medicine. It says 89% of college age students suffer from some degree of nomophobia. Now, nomophobia is a fear of being without your smartphone or an addiction to the device. It can result in poor sleep 
as students worry they'll miss a text or a post. The study indicating sleep can be severely impacted by too much phone use or too much of a dependence on that device. This morning, we've been asking people on social media how they really kind of break away from their phones, healthy habits that they have. A lot of them said it's about being intentional, setting it in another room, unplugging it, or turning it off for a set amount of time. So if you guys feel like you have nomophobia, be intentional. Create time not to hold this phone. Mark, over to you, sir.